Hello and welcome to Catalyze Music Academy. My name is Zach Kirster. I'm an Ableton Certified Trainer. And I'm very excited because today I want to get a little bit nerdy and a little bit technical and talk about audio quality and how you can maximize it and what settings to use and not only which ones to use, but why to use them and how they work. So before we dive into it, I do want to let you know I release videos on this channel every Monday and Thursday about different topics related to music production with Ableton Live. Uh, so if you want to subscribe to the channel, that would mean a lot to me and really help us grow. So first things first, uh, there are lots of different audio file types we're going to be, you can use in, inside of Live. However, for the purposes of this video, I'm mostly going to be focusing on two of them, Waves and AIFFs. Those are the most common audio file types and that's most likely what you'll be using. Between those two, one is the Windows version, one is the Apple version. I'll let you guess which one is which, but functionally and audio quality wise, they're the same thing. It really doesn't matter. Both work with both Windows and OS X. It's totally up to you. Um, you're gonna see them both a lot though. However, in your preferences, if you hit command comma or control comma, under the record warp launch tab, you can choose which file type, either WAVE or AIFF. AIFF. Uh, this is only for audio that's being recorded into live though. So if you download files off the internet and you load them up into live, they will already be their file type and this will not affect that. This is only for when you hit the record button and get audio going into live. So when we are looking at a waveform, something like this, this is just a graph where we have time on our x-axis and we have volume on our y-axis. And this is a stereo file, that's why there's two of them here. Uh, but for the most part, this gray line is gonna be essentially zero volume and it gets louder as it goes away and then quieter as it goes towards it. So before we dive into sample rate and bit depth and what they mean, I do wanna make sure everybody's on the same page in terms of audio and just how sound works. Uh, if we are measuring a waveform, one of the prime ways to do that is to start here at a zero crossing and we're gonna go up and we're gonna measure a high point. We're going to cross zero. We're gonna go down and we're gonna measure a low point here and then we're gonna go back to another zero crossing. So this would be one cycle of a waveform. The number of cycles it does per second is considered the frequency, which is measured in Hertz. So if this were to cycle up and down 50 times per second, it would have a frequency of 50 Hertz. If this were to do it 10,000 times per second, it would have a frequency of 10,000 Hertz. And the range of human hearing goes from about 20 Hertz to about 20,000 Hertz, which means there are frequencies that are lower than that, at like 10 Hertz, we just can't perceive it. And there are frequencies that are higher at like 40,000 Hertz, or all over the place, um, and we also just can't perceive that. Uh, this is not important yet, but it will be in just a moment, so just keep that in mind. So the first setting we're gonna take a look at is going to be sample rate, which is gonna be how many times we measure in time per second. So if we were to zoom in far enough here on our waveform, we would actually see that this is not a line. This is a series of discrete points. There's basically just a bunch of dots that are connected. So from here to here, we don't actually have information here, but live assumes that if there's a sample here and there's a sample here, the closest line between the two of them and connects them together. So it's just a bunch of dots. The number of dots per, we have per second is going to be the sample rate. And this from here here, this space is considered one sample. Now the standard starting point for sample rates is considered 44,100 samples per second. So this is happening 44,100 times per second. And if we zoom out, we can see that is a very, very tiny, very insignificant amount of time. The reason 44,100 is the standard sample rate is that if we are going to be measuring a waveform like this, and a cycle of a waveform, we need to measure at least once at a high point and at least once at a low point. So that means that if the entire range of human hearing goes up to 20,000 Hertz, we need to measure at, at at least 40,000 Hertz. And then for some reason, the scientists that developed this, I think they're scientists at Sony, uh, they add an extra 4,100 samples per second. I'm not entirely sure why. If anybody knows, put in the comment section below. I would love to hear about it. So 44,100 samples per second is considered the basic sample rate that you need to accurately recreate the entire range of human hearing, which is pretty cool. However, we can record at higher sample rates. So if we go to our preferences and go to our audio page, we can see we have an input output sample rate and you can see the standard is 441. However, we also have a bunch of other sample rates and the list of sample rates you have here might change depending on what kind of audio interface you have. Usually nicer audio interfaces can go to higher sample rates. So 441 being our basic one here. Our next option we have is 48K. So this is just an extra 4,000 roughly samples per second. Honestly, in terms of audio quality, you're not gonna hear much of a difference between these two. They're gonna sound basically the same. 
The reason 48K exists is that traditionally the frame rate for video is 24 frames per second and 24 frames per second and 48,000 samples per second divide evenly into each other. So 48K is a sample rate for syncing audio with video. Keep in mind, you can still sync 44.1 to video, but it tends to work a little nicer if you're using 48K. So if you're making uh, audio specifically for like a commercial or a movie or something like that, something that you know is gonna be synced to video, 48K is, is kind of like the standard sample right here. And plus I just know a lot of people who just like working at 48K, even though you can't hear much of a difference. So those are our two, our two kind of basic sample rates. However, we can either double 44.1 to 88.2 or double 48K to 96K. So when you double your sample rate, you're essentially getting twice as many dots in here. So if we were to zoom in, there'd be a dot in between each one of these, which means we would have a more accurate representation of our waveform. However, if we can accurately recreate the entire range of human hearing at 44.1, at 88.2 or other higher sample rates, it allows us to more accurately recreate frequencies that we can't hear, which begs the question, what's the point? Uh, some people, I know there's a lot of audiophiles out there who will 100% swear that they can hear a difference between something at 44.1 and 88.2 or 196 or, or, or whatever. It's debatable. The increase in audio quality is fairly, is fairly negligible, although there are definitely people out there who always want to beat the higher audio quality and uh, don't take my word for it. Try it out for yourself. Try record something at 44.1 and 88.2 and see if you can hear much difference. But generally it's considered not to be a huge increase in audio quality. And the downside is that you're going to have twice as much information, which means your file size is going to be twice as big, which means it's going to take up more space in your hard drive. It also means that your sessions are going to load slower because there's more information that it needs to read. So it's debatable whether it's actually worth it to go up to higher sample rates. Again, some people like working at higher sample rates, but try it out for yourself. Uh, so we can also take these two and double them again up to uh, 176 or 192. So if you want to be really, really, you know, high quality everything, you can record at really high sample rates and your computer may hate you, but you'll get uh, very, very accurate depictions of your waveforms. But for the most part, uh, 44.1 or 48K are going to be kind of your standard go-to uh, sample rates for audio. The other setting that you can control is going to be your bit depth. So where sample rate is going to be controlling over time, bit depth is going to be controlling your volume. And it's, it's a little different because sample rate is exactly how many times you measure per second, whereas bit depth is how many possible volumes you can measure at. So it's the resolution of your volume. Now, we have three options for bit depth, and those can, can be controlled, once again, under the record warp launch tab between 16, 24, and 32. So 16 bit is gonna be standard CD quality. This, this has been around, if you ever listen to CDs, uh, this is, they're all 16 bit, they have to be. Uh, and 16-bit is not 16 different volumes, it's 2 to the 16th power, which is roughly 65,000 different volumes you can measure at, which is pretty decent resolution. However, nobody really uses CDs anymore, and unlike sample rate, where it's debatable whether the increase in audio quality is perceivable, you can hear a difference between a 16-bit file and a 24-bit file. Maybe not on earbuds, but on decent speakers, you'll be able to hear a difference between the two. So for those reasons, 24-bit is very much replacing 16-bit as the standard for digital audio uh, because you're going from 65,000 different volumes you can measure at to something like 16 million different volumes. So pretty big increase in quality there. Once again, you will get a larger file size, uh, but ultimately it's considered worth it. So generally, 24-bit is gonna be kind of the magic number here. However, there is also the option of 32-bit, which bumps up your resolution to about 4 billion different volumes you can measure at. If your resolution is already at 16 million, uh, you can't really hear much of a difference in audio quality here when you go up to 32-bit, and again, you're getting a larger file size. So 32-bit is not super common. Uh, however, there is one really interesting thing about 32-bit. Uh, due to some very crazy complicated math, you can actually clip a file at 32-bit. You can go above zero dB and then turn it back down later and it won't be distorted. So there are some interesting creative applications for 32-bit for sound design and like doing really, like really crazy weird stuff with compression and, and you know basically maxing out your volume and then just turning it back down, uh, which is probably a topic I'll cover in a different video. But there, there are a few choice cases for 32-bit that are out there um, if you want to try it out. But 24-bit and either 44.1 or 48K are going to be kind of your magic numbers for the most part when it comes to uh, setting this up. And once again, this is only for audio that you're recording into live, uh, not pre-recorded audio. Any audio file that you have 
already downloaded or put in your computer will actually tell you over here um, the sample rate and bit depth, which is pretty handy. The very last thing that I do wanna mention is the mixers in live, both the individual track mixers as well as the master are by default in 32-bit, which means if you are working, just doing some sound design with like a synthesizer and some effects, it will by default be at 32-bit, whether you want it or not. And then lastly, once you are done with your audio file, if you want to export it, uh, we have options to control our sample rate and our bit depth. So we can uh, export here at different sample rates. Keep in mind that if you record at a low quality, you know, 441 for example, and then you export it at 882, it will not increase your quality. You cannot go from a low quality to a high quality. But if you start at a high quality, and this is another reason to say record at 882, you can always go lower if you want to. So you can change that here, but generally you're gonna be working at 441. Uh, and then down here, we can choose our file type between WAV, AIFFF, or FLAC. And we have our bit depths here. Now this is interesting, and I think probably a topic for a different video. Uh, like I mentioned, the mixers in live are at 32-bit. So if you're bouncing at 32-bit, you're good to go. However, if you're going to a lower bit depth, either 24 or 16, it gives you options for dithering. Now, when you are going from a high quality to a low quality, you're losing some resolution. So by decreasing your quality, it actually adds in a really subtle amount of white noise, uh, which is like just digital artifacting that you not, don't really want here. So dithering is essentially the process of adding in good white noise that's going to help cancel out the bad white noise. And these are basically different algorithms for adding in different kinds of noise, but that's essentially what dithering does. And so if you're at 32-bit, dithering is not even an option, but if you are going to either 16 or 24, these will allow you to basically cancel out any bad noise that happens when you're going from a higher bit depth to a lower bit depth. Uh, but yeah, that's basically it. Hopefully that is helpful for you. Sam uh, sample rate and bit depth are, uh, I think, not often understood. So hopefully it gives you a better idea of how they work and how you can use them to increase your quality. Uh, oftentimes, you know, you can just leave your settings in your preferences however you want and just kind of set it and forget it. And if you need to change them later on, you can totally do that. So hopefully you enjoyed watching that. Hopefully that was helpful for you. Make some decisions about how you are changing your audio quality and how you're playing around with it. Uh, again, thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you again soon.